Good morning. And welcome to St. Barnabas Episcopal Church here in McMinnville, Oregon. It's good to see all of you on this fourth Sunday of Advent. And welcome to those of you who will be watching via our YouTube channel. Well, to today we light the, all four Advent candles uh, as we move closer to Jesus' birth. The candle of the prophets who give us hope, the candle of the Prince of Peace who was born in Bethlehem, the candle of joy for those who first heard of the birth of Jesus, the fourth candle reminds us of the love of God for all creation. Why do we light four candles? The first candle is the candle of the prophets who gave us hope. The second candle is the candle of Bethlehem where the Prince of Peace was born. The third candle is the candle of joy, reminding us of the joy of those who first heard of the birth of the Messiah. The fourth candle of Advent is the candle of love, the message of the angels. Its light reminds us of the love that God has for all creation. Jesus shows us God's perfect love in human form. The Bible says that God so loved the world that God gave the only Son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We light this candle today to remind us of how we find God's perfect love through Jesus. Loving God, thank you for the gift of your hope, peace, joy, and love. Open our hearts to receive you. May our lives reflect your light and bring hope, peace, joy, and love as gifts for others. We pray to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 56, verses 5 through 8. Thanks, Lori.
Son and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is a reading from the book of Samuel. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind. The Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I was brought up, since I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you, the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
This sermon is based on the work of Alice Cook. Greetings, favored ones. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, for nothing will be impossible with God. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, God's call is coming to us through Mary's song, The Magnificat, as well as Luke's Annunciation. These are stories of conception and promise. It's really all about God and what God is doing. I mean, God is doing such wonderful, seemingly impossible things, downright miraculous and surprising in the Annunciation story about Mary and an angel's astonishing announcement. I mean, don't you think God must like disorder and surprise? It doesn't seem like God delights in shocking people. Spectacular news comes Mary's way and it comes in three parts. She will bear a son even though she is a virgin. Her son will be a ruler even though the land is in the iron grip of the Roman Empire. Her son's name will be Jesus or the one who saves. Like a dear friend said, most astonishing, this message was meant for more than Mary. It is addressed to you and to me. It travels down through the centuries and reverberates in our own ears. In Advent, we confess that the Blessed Virgin Son has come to rule in our own hearts and in our lives, reigning over us in grace, mercy, and love. After all, nothing is impossible with God. As Tricia Centrifit puts it, Mary sings of the yes of God that she has learned through her Jewish faith. She knows God can be trusted and she is therefore willing to say yes to God, even when she does not understand how a virgin like herself could bear God's son. After all, nothing is impossible with God. And yet like Mary, we may need time to adjust to astonishing news, to question whether or not trials and tragedies or God's magnificent promises are for real and to contemplate possible consequences. Mary asks, how can this be? Mary's question shapes our faith by reminding us how much is hidden from us. The exclamation of these four words may well signify the nearness of God. Have you experienced the nearness of God? I have experienced the nearness of God in the, in the beauty and wonder of nature. And I've experienced the nearness of God in hospital waiting rooms and at the bedside of the dying or in hearing a good report from a doctor. In a hundred different situations of human life, we become especially aware of the nearness of God's presence. These words express a deep human longing and our conviction that God is involved in our lives in ways that are mysterious indeed, just as God's ways were mysterious to Mary that day and every day that followed. I mean, think about it, the connection between Mary's life and our own, for in each person's life, God takes part in the unfolding of human existence from before the moment of conception. It's a staggering thought that we were a twinkle in God's eye before we ever came to be. You can observe that we are not always so keenly aware or perhaps accepting of God's hand at work in our lives. I wonder if it has to do with feelings of vulnerability or invulnerability, with the experience of feeling more or less powerless in our lives. All of us, men and women, all are included in Mary's and Elizabeth's times of expectancy, calling us together in partnership with God, in God's plan for this world. The Magnificat addresses all the ways we set ourselves apart from one another, which is the excuse we need to set us over and against one another. We are made in the image of God, meaning that we are to see God in one another and are called to say yes to compassion and love for all. At last week's lectionary discussion, we decided that God intends to draw Mary 
and all of us into what God is doing and God apparently is not willing to do this behind our backs or without our own participation. And this is what, in some mysterious way, makes Mary's story our own. Or at least it makes her story one that we might understand a bit better. Greetings, favored ones. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, for nothing will be impossible with God. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and join me in affirming our faith in the words handed down to us in the Nicene Creed. We believe. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and re reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for all the blessings of this life, including those who celebrate their birthdays and anniversaries this week, including the birthdays of Steve Macy and Jonathan Booth and the anniversary of Carlene and Jonathan Booth. We ask your thanksgivings for... Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask healing for Susan, Nicholas, Chris, Miles, Andre, Sue, John, Jeff, Tom, Joshua, Molly, Sue, Fred, Paul, Lee, Kendall, Anne, Claudia, Shirley, JC, Todd, Joe, Dick, Darcy, Sean, Marlia, Mark, Jeffrey, Amale, President Jimmy Carter, Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, and the people in Ukraine and Russia affected by war. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of Palestine and Israel, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to you, to your mercy, all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life, amen. amen. At this time, I will bless another one of Lori's magnificent icons, this being Mary, the mother of Jesus. You wanna come forward, Lori? Gorgeous. Christ is the icon of the invisible God. All things were created through him and for him. The word became flesh. Let us pray. O Lord our God, who created us after your own image and likeness, who redeems and sanctifies us through Christ, who took upon himself the form of a servant and became man. Your saints we venerate as being in your image and likeness, and we adore and glorify you as our creator. Wherefore, we pray you, send forth your blessing upon these, this icon, and with the sprinkling of hallowed water, bless and make holy these, this icon unto your glory, in honor and remembrance of Holy Mary, Mother of God, Jesus, the only begotten Son, and the Archangel Gabriel. Grant that as we look upon this holy image, our, heart, our hearts may be drawn to things which can be seen only by the eye of faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Hallowed and blessed is this icon of Mary, the mother of God. 
and Jesus, the only begotten Son, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, through the sprinkling of holy water, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lori. I invite you all to really check this out when you come up for the Eucharist. It's just stunning. So thank you, Lori, for adding this to our, to our lives and our ministry here. And now, my sisters and brothers, may the peace of Christ be always with you. unique that Advent 4 and Christmas Eve fall on the same day. So there's another service today. Uh, five o'clock uh, begins with carolings and the Eucharist starts at 530. And if I don't see you later, I wish you all a blessed and joyous Christmas. And I'm out of the office next week. Uh, in case an emergency crops up, please call me on my cell phone. I'm available on my cell phone. So, thank you. Anything else? Then let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. You sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy 
kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 59, found in the Blue Hymnal. <laughs>